Hi, everybody. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Mind Of. Today we have the, the Minds Of Telemedicine. We thank everybody for taking the time to spend with us. Uh, this is a super user group. Up we have Cody up in the upper left. In my, I don't know if it's the same for you guys. We have Sean upper right, Don McCarter, Sales. Then we have Nick, and then we have Lauren. And then Allison will be somewhere in this screen in a few minutes. You guys will see. Um, what we want to do today is you guys, we, we thank you for doing what you guys do. It's kind of amazing to look at numbers. And I, you know, I've gotten from the clinician to me, seeing patients to sitting behind a computer and counting numbers has kind of been a, a different change for me lifestyle. But it's great to see you guys. What I want to do is I want to think about and discuss what makes you guys tick. You know, why? You know, I'm going to go start with Cody and like, what kind of hints? You have people, you have some people who are users who go, I'll get tomorrow. You know, I know Nick has been from day one, like, all right, I'll do 20 days a day, no big deal. But like, why? What, Cody, what, what makes you kind of get into that quickly and decide, hey, I, this is easy. I like this. I could do this. What, what's your mindset? Um, so, so initially I, I, I wasn't a hundred percent sure I, I wasn't too tech savvy so that I thought could be a barrier. Um, however, you know, just going off of, of my prime beliefs that, you know, a lot of, uh, physical therapy is, uh, you know, functional mobility, changing the way people move, uh, navigate. And I thought, you know, you can definitely do this over the computer still, um, and still provide quality care through telehealth. So I thought, you know, um, with all the changes going on with COVID-19 and everything like that, this would be a great way to still connect with patients. Um, they're going through the same thing we are, majority at least. So they're in their home, kind of stuck there, uh, maybe working from home. So there's still a lot we can do inside of their home because they may still have pain or difficulty with certain functions. So why not um, nail on it in that aspect? Cool. And Nick, what do you think? Because you're, you're the other guy. You're the guy who we know we're going to be the social media guy. How is it for you? to? Is this a natural fit for you? Hello, yeah, I mean, Welcome first, back. I just want to say how, how thankful I am to be in this Brady Bunch boxes here with all these great people. <laughs> so it's uh, it's an honor. Um, yeah, I, I, I am going to echo the same thing there. I think the uh, the at the heart of what we do, it's not it's not so much we're we're fixing people. I think it's more we're we're empowering people to kind of we're giving them the tools. We're just their mentor and we are helping them improve their their overall quality of life and i think telehealth i have some experience in telehealth before the covid 19 um pandemic but it's it's really a, a paradigm shift and it's it's it kind of forces us to use i think our most important tools and that's i think our ears and we have to really listen get to know the patient inside and out and then you know really kind of guide them. And I think there's a lot of value to, to seeing the patient in their own, in their own home. Um, you know, if you ask someone to do a, a single leg stance activity or, or some kind of activity and, and in your mind, you say, yeah, just hold on to something sturdy when you do it. That's one thing, but then you don't know what's going to happen when they go home. But if you're in their living room, and you can say, I want you to hold on to that blue couch every time right. you do this. I can't exercise. help you up. I can't help you up. <laughs> so if you go, you go. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, right. that's hard. Sean, Sean, what's your thoughts? Uh, just yeah, kinda, just how's kinda, it going? What's the thought process? Yeah, I mean, I think it's been a great thing for this um, this time, um, you know, when the COVID crisis started to hit and they were closing everything down. Um, there are a lot of patients that were kind of lost in terms of what to do and what was going to happen next. So I think that we had this up and running pretty quickly. Uh, it was a huge relief to a lot of the patients and made it easier to make sure that we were giving continuous care and not leaving anybody hanging. So um, thanks right. to you guys for, for getting this going pretty quickly. Um, I have to say, before this project, I have to tell you, before this project, I had a full head of hair. Yeah. So I'm just telling you guys. <laughs> <I'll leave it. laughs> um, so then it just, it was really the best way to keep people safe, especially I'm in Manhattan, so um, they, they shut things down pretty quickly. Um, so it was the best way just to keep in contact with people and most people were pretty willing to give it a try. Um, and then just to go off of what someone Nick was saying, um, where you get to actually, you know, kind of team up with the patient, the, the telehealth does make it more of a team effort. They can't come in and have you just like tell them what to do for an hour. Um, they need to be responsible in working on things at home. Usually they've done some of their exercises or you can see how they're doing it. Uh, and it becomes a little bit more collaborative, which I think is a good, right. um, especially, you know, if people are getting better and transitioning to where they're discharging, you can say, okay, show me how you're doing this. Uh, show me what you've had 
had trouble with, and I think it works pretty That's well great. for that. Great. Allison, where we, we started to talk about before you came back on was something where everybody thanked everybody for you know, doing what you guys do. And what made you, how'd you adapt so quickly? That was the question. I want to see what your thoughts were because you're another early adapter and kind of got it going and using it consistently. Yeah. So for me, you know, I never formally did telehealth, but I feel like I've done it my whole career. Haven't we all been called mm -hmm. by friends and family and walked them through something over the phone or, you know, via video? So to me, it was something I've always been doing. Um, we immediately reached out to every single patient in the clinic that stopped coming. And um, between myself calling my patients and my front desk calling the furloughed therapist patients, we were able to talk them through that. And, um, you know, I find that the biggest tool we have, and Sean, you would agree with this from Martin's teaching, is education. And this to me, when I was picking up my other therapist patients, it was like it was glaring how much education that they needed on how to sit at home. And, and you know, I had college kids that didn't know how to sit and they were having back pain. So that, that value of the education. And also it really demonstrates the value of what we believe in high volume exercise, that they don't really need a lot of manual therapy if you can teach them one, how to stop aggravating themselves, and two, how to do that exercise properly. For some people I've literally watched and tweaked the exercises and some we just kind of talk and hash it out. Like, what are we doing? So I feel like it was right. a good bridge for people who were afraid to come in. Uh, it conveniently worked out for a few post-ops that they really weren't going to be able to do anything because of, you know, their pat they couldn't do progress in their protocols. So it, it needed a nice bridge that we could go once a week and now we're starting to progress them. You know, going forward, Perfect. that might be a good method for some of those people in the early protocols to preserve visits. Maybe we can do a telehealth right. once a week. So I thought that right. those things were good. So for me, it was really not hard at all. I felt like it was something I'd already already done. Mm -hmm. um, oh. And the patients really responded. And then I just went hog wild on Facebook and LinkedIn and said, hey, friends, remember, I, I'm here. And so... Some of my skaters that won't drive to Salem, Mass, are connecting with me via telehealth. I would have sent them to North Andover, but here they are in Salem. So, I see Laura smiling over there for, from yeah. that side of it. We're gonna so, go to Don. Just a quick, from your perspective, from the sales department, like what? I'll let you ask the rest of the telemedicine people questions. Is there anything you want to ask these guys that you know we start talking a little about or your experiences, et cetera, but or tricks? Well, maybe not questions quite yet, but I think, you know, some great comments and uh, insight as far as from the clinical perspective, because when we first started talking about doing telehealth back in the fall, there was some, I don't want to say pushback, but there's, you know, where we're very manual based, you know, therapy and things of that nature. And so I was like, well, how are we going to sell this telehealth? But and then here we were in March and we had no choice and, and glad to hear people were able to, to jump on board you know, pretty quickly. Um, I think this is telehealth is certainly going to be here as we go forward. And now, Elton, as you just said, how do we use telehealth as part of that pre-surgery type of, of therapy? You know, how do we connect with those patients post-therapy? You know, it's a patient for life uh, mentality and attitude that we want to keep. So, I mean, it's very encouraging to me to hear, you know, how you guys have adapted to uh, the telehealth uh, when you likely are going to be very hands-on therapy. It's not the traditional, but it's you know, certainly not just our organization, but many other PT companies around the country have now embraced you know, the telemedicine as an adjunct. It's not going to replace the brick and mortar, but it's an adjunct as far as what we're doing and how do we enhance that patient's ex experience. And I forget who said it, uh, maybe it's Nick. You know, we're, we're, we're just there to, we're the facilitator. We're helping them get through because we're only seeing you know, three times a week for an hour or so, if that. So how do we impact, you know, their rehab and their life going forward? So Lauren, from your perspective, so Lauren has uh, done an amazing job on the marketing website side. Is there anything specific to the group or what, what we can say more to, they could say to their patients or things that you want them to help you with what you do every day? Yeah, this has been an amazing effort. Uh, like John said, we, we wondered how we were going to get a gargantuan effort off the ground and have the adoption. So this has been the perfect uh, opportunity for us to really jump in head first and practice. 
from a marketing perspective and from a digital perspective, you know, Allison said it right. You know, we've been doing this. It's really just a matter of how do we make this apply to healthcare and how do we continue to serve our patients? So I want to hear maybe what you guys have experienced are uh, either creative uh, interactions you've had with patients. Uh, what are some of the funniest moments? Maybe what are the wins? What have you had a patient say, well, I didn't think we'd be able to accomplish this uh, via telehealth, but, you know, we did, and it was a surprise to you or them. Yeah, if anybody now, raise your hand. If you guys can think of something specific, or we could always, obviously, Lauren's always available, but if you guys can think of something, start talking. So, so yeah. one of the... Uh, one of the big um, successes early off, I think, that I had is, I mean, like, and Nick touched on it. He did a great job talking about it. Um, you know, we're we're here for the patients. We're here. It's a collaborative effort. You know, um, we're, we kind of guide them, right? They put in all the hard work, the effort, and, uh, you know, we're here to, you know, guide them down that path. And, uh, you know, really nothing changes other than the setting it's being delivered in. So, you know, you have that, so as a physical therapist, you have the same mentality in the clinic as you do if the patient's in their home and you're sitting, uh, you know, doing telehealth uh, from your home. So um, one of the things that I've, I've done with all, all of my visits is I usually start off with, you know, hey, what's been going really well? What's going not so well? And, you know, feel free to take this time if, if you want to take a step back from the exercises or questions like that. If there's something in your house that you've been doing that you can't do, you know, let's let's head over to the steps that are difficult for you. Take the camera, a computer, we'll figure out a setup and let's go through it. Let's let's roll up our sleeves and figure out why is that so difficult or painful or hey, this is really easy. Let's progress it. So um I would say just sharing the torch with the patient instead of going on saying, Okay, I want to add X, Y, and Z exercises and that's my goal for today. Uh, I think starting it open ended with a conversation of just, you know, hey, how's life going? Um, what's what's the obstacle of the week for you? What was the obstacle of the week for you? Um, what's your progress like towards that? Let's talk about it. So um, I know I got a lot of feedback from the patients that said they like that um, and they feel like there's even more of that with telehealth versus, versus the clinical settings. You know, I really like talking about, you know, uh, questions and answers. And, and that's like the thing, the educational components is that Allison was talking about as well. Um, and I just think that's the vital component in this. That's awesome. Hey, Nick, I have a question for you, because you're the uh, my camera kind of guy. So I'm a new therapist, and, and truly, how do, you, how do you tell patients where to set their camera? How do you set up your camera? Like, we're doing this is easy, but if I'm going to do an exercise, what do you tell them? Is there hints? Give me Nick hints. <laughs> so, uh, so I guess, yeah, some setup is, is crucial, right? Because you don't want that patient who like, you see, like, it's like the guy from like home improvement, like behind the fence. And it's like, I can't, you know, just move the camera a little bit. Um, so yeah, the, the setup, and it depends if they're on their cell phone or if they're on a computer. And uh, so the first day I usually try to give some tips and things like that. So um, you know, you want good lighting. You don't want too much noise in the background. Well, for, for our end, I guess you want obviously not noise in the background, a nice, you know, kind of blank background. Um, and then, yeah, for the patient, depending on what we're doing, um, you want, <laughs> yeah. um, <laughs> um, I thought it was a skunk at first. I was going to, uh, um, yeah, but it, it, you know, it depends, uh, depends on the patient. So I definitely have them, you know, adjust their camera. Can I, you know, take a look at your ankle? How's it feeling today? And then can you, can you kind of move it up a little bit? And, um, but, uh, but for the most part, uh, a lot of it is, is, um, the subjective. So we're, we're talking, you know, face to face, um, back to kind of the question about any, uh, success stories, I guess, not exactly a specific story, but what I've been getting a lot is a lot of um, aha moments or, um, you know, being very receptive to pain education and, and what pain is, what pain isn't, um, and, and to kind of decrease fear, apprehension. And, and that has been what I've gotten a lot of positive feedback about is that they, you know, the patient may have still have the same level of soreness, but they are much more resilient. They're, they're pushing through and functioning a lot better. And, and that is, you know, a testament to the power of, of, uh, of, you know, education. Nice. Sharon, can you bring me, just give me an idea, post-op. Like people are asking, how do I take range of motion? Uh, interesting part, I had one hand therapist who said she had patients, truly took range of motion. She did this, 
and we told them to move, and she put a goniometer. Let's show how accurate it is. I think we're accurate five degrees or ten degrees. So that's probably like twenty within plus or minus twenty. So at least I had that thought. So what do you do initially? Eva? How do you tell their range of motion? How do you tell if it's yeah. tender? Is there tricks? Uh, well, it's um, you can't use the same tools that you've used in the clinic, but you can get creative and you can kind of use landmarks to help guide your own visual assessment and also help the patient get an idea of how can they check their own motion. Um, because we're not always there checking in on them and assessing it passively, we need them to have a way to see if they're making progress. And it's also a good way right. to help keep them motivated if they're behind a little bit in motion, okay, I can check this every time um, and get a little bit better. So something, uh, I have one post-op um, ankle fracture patient who started telehealth, which I thought was going to be maybe a disaster, but she has been doing pretty well <laughs> so far. Um, right. So something you can do there is uh, the dorsiflexion assessment where you have their toe on the wall and see if they can touch their knee towards the wall. And that's something that They're they can functional. check every time and then compare it to the other side. Um, for, for like knee flexion, I have a couple of patients who are, uh, had ACL reconstruction. And, you know, they can do the one person um, is doing a heel slide on her floor and it's a wooden floor and she's counting the panels between her butt and her heel and comparing it to the other More. side. And every every week we're trying to get another panel of length. Right. So How do you if document that one panel, one panel worth of yeah, I, I've one been panel worth of range? It, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's a great point with yeah. the panel. So I have a patient who um, has uh, adhesive capsulitis. So what she does is she does a almost like a um, like a child's pose in yoga, mm -hmm. and she has a mat, and she she has a, a tape tape where she puts her knees, and then dash marks on the mat, so that every time she awesome. reaches a little bit forward, she knows what what number she's at. So that exa exactly like you said with the panels, right. you know, we find ways to until somebody right until somebody screws her up and moves the mat. Then you'll see. Yeah. Thanks for getting off. So, Allison, this is my documentation is my least favorite part of physical therapy, to be honest with you, but you are by far the expert. Is there things you could tell us that can help the therapist make this a payable situation? Yeah. yeah so, well, first off, I literally split the screen. So, their note is in front of me and they're on the other side. So, I'm actually typing and working. Um, and so, it depends on, you know, if it's an eval, I'm I'm typing this subjective and I'll clean it up later um, so that I can be efficient and try to remember everything I, I can. And then I walk them through, you know, the fun, you know, their, their problem list, what's their functional limitation. So on an email, I'll try to get, get that much is done. As far as doing the activities, what I do is, so I have their activities right up while they're doing it. I immediately change everything to no. And then as I do them, I hit yes. And, and you can make it, the yes things go to the top. So as you click yes, it goes to the top. So you can kind of go down the list of what you've done because some of my flow sheets are in order and some are not so much depending on the patient. Mm -hmm. um, so while they're doing that exercise, I'm watching them and whatever I'm cueing them on. Okay, so your squat, can you hinge forward more at the hips? So I'm typing cue to hinge more at the hips. And then when I go into my assessment, I say, you know, um, observe the patients through the activity log you know, see comments for queuing in the activities, which that actually will show up in the print version of the note. Um, and then, you know, I, I just put down that it was a physio busy track video. I actually had to call a few people because busy track wasn't working. So I wrote that I talked with them on the telephone. Um, so I just try to document as many things I, I can remember, but that's why I try to do it while I'm doing it. I call it game time, game time documentation. Document while they're with you. Um, so, you know, you can watch them pretty well and be typing a little. I'm a good typer. I don't need to use my hands. I mean, I don't need to see while I'm typing and then you just edit later. But that would be my biggest advice is to keep, to keep the screen up and not try to do it later. I mean, if you look at my schedule, right. I've got one yeah. right after another and I could never catch up if I didn't if I had to wait till the end of the day. So what we're gonna do is end, soon we're gonna end, but I want each of you to start thinking and while you're thinking, you're gonna have 30 seconds and you're gonna give an elevator pitch to the rest of your cohorts. Why should they do this? It's how, ba how bad it really isn't? Little tricks, and I kind of keep you, we could talk forever, you guys are wonderful, but 30 second elevator, I'll let you think. And Lauren and Don, anything before we, while they're thinking, 
because their, their minds are going now. 30 seconds. Anything you guys can, questions or anything you could think of to put in, or we just let them go to the 30 second uh, uh, Hall of Fame type of discussion. <laughs> what do you guys think? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. They've got yeah. some unbelievable insights already, so I trust okay. whatever cool. they're gonna. And Don, you're muted, so I don't know if you want to be muted, <laughs> if you want to say something, but. Uh, we lost his phone. Can't hear you. I think. Yeah. Wait. There we go. Um, um, Anything specific? No, I think That's fine. I'm just going to. It's been great insight. You know, it's all about that user experience. And I think that, you know, as you guys continue to, you know, as much as we can be part of your microphone, you know, to, you know, our cohorts, as well as, you know, your colleagues, as well as, you know, the, the masses out there, including the doctors, you know, because, you know, what we're going to need to you know, do is demonstrate you know, looking at the outcomes, you know, how, how in, in doing telehealth, our outcomes are just as good or even better, you know, than, you know, some of the traditional therapies because, you know, we need to demonstrate that to our payers. So it's going to be um, right. looking forward to all the, what's in store for us as we continue expanding the program. All right, Cody, you ready? Ready sure. for a 30 second to Go. I won't really time. Just give it this quick. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I guess my parting words would be that, uh, you know, I have heard from some people that they think it's kind of like an uphill, uh, clinician wise, that they think it's an uphill battle to go into telehealth and that it's, you know, less effective. I always say it goes back to uh, the basics of promoting functional independence with keeping the patient's uh, interest at heart. And, um, you know, what better way to do that than education since, you know, most of the time you're seeing a patient for, 12 weeks or so, uh, maybe less, maybe more, but uh, ideally you're still giving them the tools to do this on their own. So this is still a great vessel, um, you know, to be able to deliver that, that goal. Yep. Uh, we got Nick, 30 seconds or less. What do you got? Yeah. Uh, first, nice meeting you on this elevator. Uh, what, what floor would you like to go on? Maybe I can hit your button for you. For an, um, but I think a lot of nails were hit on the head here. Uh, and but Allison, I think uh, I want to echo the point that we've always done this, right? This is what we do every day, and it's just a different way of doing it. And I I truly believe that it is the future, and it is all about us taking a backseat and and letting the patient be the one that 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 does that helps themselves. And we're there to help them um, with education, with with listening, with empathy, and um, and I think you know, like I said, I think it is the future, and it's. It's we all of us on this call and many others have seen the the positive effects from it. So I look forward to continuing to embrace it in the future. That was thirty two seconds, but I'll give it to you. It's okay, <laughs> Sean. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, great to He'll talk to everybody. Here. Sean, I'll, I'll I'll keep it short. Uh, my my <laughs> pitch for people that might be um, a little more hesitant to get into it is that. It's actually in today's PT world, we're often busy. We're seeing a lot of people at the same time. It's actually a nice chance to get to talk to somebody one-on-one, -on -one, no distractions. Uh, you can see them in their own environment and really get to listen and, and talk to somebody. And from there, you can do right. a lot of good things in terms of building rehab. Short enough? Cool. We're back on schedule, back on time now. Allison? <laughs> I would just say that, you know, you should value your skills. We have probably the best people to triage pain, function, limitations, and we are the best educators. And that's really the majority of what people need. They need to know how to not hurt themselves and really have confidence in your skills because you can do it in person. It's much easier on the phone. All right, thank you. You guys are amazing. You know, we're a great group. I appreciate all the time, effort. Um, Stay safe out there, do what you're doing, um, and you guys are a great voice box for the rest of the company, and we definitely appreciate you. Stay healthy. It's Rob Shapiro from In the Minds House.